Okay. Let's tilt the camera back up so you can see me. So then, like, my table. Hi. <laughs> this is me saying hi. Um, I just finished sorting out my light gray that, um, so I did all those big sorts uh, a couple weeks back where I took all the my old builds and I sorted them into color and then I sorted them into function. I got rid of all the other colors except for gray and black and I just did gray. And uh, black is right here. And I just, I honestly, out of all the colors, I hate sorting black. Well, I, I, hate, I, I hate to use the word hate. I dislike sorting black. I like sorting black the least. <laughs> I like sorting black the least. And that's just because there's so much of it all the time. And uh, I, I don't know if anybody's looked up at the stats, looked up the stats, looked up the stats, looked up the stats. And I think my personal opinion is black has more pieces, not numbers, but more types of pieces uh, than any other color. And so it's just, it's just so long to sort. So let's put that aside <laughs> for now until I get to the point where I want to sort it. Those are, and, and again, I, just, I have to just wash those uh, bins I just got from Valley Village and sort those out. So I might do black at that time because there'll be more of it. Um, but I just finished sorting light gray and I just wanted to talk about these two bins. This is the only... These are the only two bins which are identical and they are two by four gray bricks. Both bins uh, have two by four gray bricks. And the only reason why I have two bins because I said I have one bin of two by four bricks in black, white, red, blue, yellow, uh, tan. And anytime I get more two by four bricks in those colors, they go straight into the overflow bin. Light gray is the exception. And the only reason why light gray is the exception is because you can't get them anymore unless you buy them used straight up. And and I don't want to go, if I actually, this, uh, and most of the, these, these two by fours uh, bricks came from uh, my big, huge uh, build when I was building that uh, crater. And so I don't want to go looking for light gray. And overall, it's not going to get more than two bins. Now these two bins are now full. <laughs> so I'm pretty happy about that. But like, for example, if I kept all my red two by four bricks and just kept them in these bins, and this is what was taking up a lot of room, I would have five, six, maybe even seven of these shoe boxes full of just two by four bricks. So I need one. And I don't build in red. Red's filler. <laughs> and yellow, sometimes uh, I use yellow, but not usually yellow bricks. Uh, I use a lot of blue bricks, obviously, uh, for my builds right now. But um, light gray is the, the one exception in this room right now where no light gray ends up in the overflow bin at all because it is a finite commodity they're not making anymore. <laughs> they got light blay now, which is all behind me. <clears throat> and I haven't gotten to the point where light blay has a full bin of one specific piece. Um, which is okay because again, I don't have a lot of light blade because I don't buy a lot of new sets, but, uh, old light gray stays out of the overflow bins. And I thought I'd tell you that because I think it's, for me, it's what has to happen, uh, again. And, and, and this is the other thing. So this is the oddity. These are just two by four bricks, two bins of two by four bricks. I got a bin of two by two bricks and that's not full yet a bin, a two by two bricks. And then I have a bin with two by three, two by six, two by eight, two by 10, four by 10, whatever. I got a bin of that, those, and that's not full yet either. So two bins of two by four, one bin mostly, well, one almost full bin of two by two and the rest. So there's only two other bins of two by X bricks. <laughs> so I got, I don't know why I have, I don't, I don't think I did a brick link order. Uh, so I'm just trying to figure out where I got all these two by four light gray bricks <clears throat> and a lot of them are pretty good. So I think I must order them from somebody. Uh, they're not, uh, I mean, castles didn't have too many, too many two by four bricks in them back in the day when I used to buy castles. 
uh, sporadically. I bought mostly classic space, but I did buy classic cla castles and a little bit of town sporadically. But uh, castles were one by X bricks, and that's why I got loads of one by X bricks. As we just saw, I just did that sort here. Uh, and speaking of which, you you saw me uh, break down or sub sort again. I had a bin of one by two, uh, one by one, one by two, one by three, one by four bricks, and then a bin of one by six plus bricks. And so my bin of one by one, two, three, four was full to the brim before I even started this sort of those pieces that I took out of my build. So I subsorted and I was debating what what size I was going to subsort out because I think one by two would be the most numerous pieces I had in there out of one by one, three, four. One by two would have been the most uh, number of pieces in there. Uh, for that specific part but i went with one by four <laughs> just so one by one one by two one by three in one bin uh one by four and then one by six plus one by six eight ten twelve fifth uh, eight sixteen so um that's what i did uh might come back and bite me in the butt but that's what i did so right now my one by four uh light gray bricks takes up half the bin I could have put one by threes in there and just had a bin of one by one and one by twos and then a bin of one by three one by fours and then one bin of one by six plus but should i acquire more light gray which is probably not going to happen as i mentioned before in my entire collection the one by x bricks they're sorted overall black white red blue yellow uh one by one and one by three in the same bin because i don't have a lot of one by ones and they don't take up a lot of space so i i i've never had an overflow of one by ones yet and i definitely don't have an overflow of one by threes yet and they all fit in the same bin uh so one by one one by three one bin then a one by two bin, a one by four bin most times one by six bin uh and then sometimes uh, and also most times one by eight plus bin uh, which works for me because they're all over there and I just have to grab the bins I need to come over here. So I didn't want to break that idea up. So if I do get more light gray, again, I just got some in this lot that I just got, uh, those, those, those bags that I picked up for the last couple of days, I'm going to sort them out and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, so I try to maintain consistency again, subject to change without notice. I, I, I am, I am a mystery. I do change my mind. But right now, right now, this sorting method works for me. It has worked for me for numerous years now, even before I started getting these shoe boxes when I had the uh, the, the uh, ice cream crates, the ice cream containers. Uh, and before that, when I was just using Tupperware and Ziplocs, it works for me. Now, though I sorted that way before, except it was just a pain in the butt to go through all the Ziplocs because <laughs> I had all the Ziplocs in one drawer of all these things sorted out into the various functions. Uh, and that's just painful. Ziplocs, and, and you can hear from other people who, um, at, at the evolution of their sorting process, uh, somewhere in that sorting process from when you're a kid and it's just one cardboard box to a multifaceted, multi-approach of sorting like I have here. At some point in there, almost in every single iteration of everybody's single way of sorting, Ziploc bags show up. <laughs> now again, I can't even complain because in this room, I possibly have like a dozen or more Ziplocs sporadically placed throughout these bins uh, with the unique parts that belong to that function. Like for example, my one by four uh, hinge plates blue are all in the Ziploc in the hinge bin because I you know, I build these round things and I get, I, I'm going to need those one by four hinge plates quickly. And so I do keep all of them in a Ziploc in the multi uh, part bin. Uh, what I call multi-part hinge and stuff. So um, uh, that's in a Ziploc, my blue ones. I don't do it for red, I don't do it for black, I don't do it for any other color except for blue because of course I'm gonna build them blue. <laughs> so uh, a few other things I have, uh, and, and this was a BrickLink order, uh, 4L, <coughs> 4L um, wands or whatever um, in yellow because I use those a lot in my layout because they look cool and I like them. So I got those from a BrickLink order and I just stayed in the Ziploc and that went into the round bin. Again, this is, again, not, not BrickLink sorting, uh, but uh, the round bin is all round pieces. <laughs> so, and those are round pieces, but they're also in a Ziploc in the round piece bin. Uh, so I do use Ziplocs now occasionally still, because now it's helpful for me. Uh, I, not, there's not a hundred Ziplocs in here, not a thousand Ziplocs in here. It's like maybe a dozen, probably less. Um, my minifigs, the torsos 
and the legs are all sorted by color. But they, they're all in one bin, so I want the red legs in a, in a Ziploc, the black legs in a Ziploc. So it makes my life easier to try to find the right legs. Uh, so and, until, the, until they overflow, in which case I'm going to start sorting up. Maybe I'll use smaller containers if I get a different shelving thing. But right now, all the torsos uh, and legs are in Ziplocs because they're sorted by color inside one bin of torsos or legs. Um, I keep meaning to tackle my mini figs because it's just, for me, it's disgusting uh, how many mini figs uh, I have that are apart and trying to figure out exactly what I have. Um, honestly, I just give up. I, I look at the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, nine ish of these guys. And those are just random mini fig pieces and parts. Again, I have a torso bin, I have a leg bin, but then again, I have partially completed uh, mini figs that stayed together after all these years. And I don't know the head, maybe whatever. And so those are in a bin and I got full, fully complete. And, and even the collectibles are now in there because I didn't have a place to display them, but I don't really care. Um, so all my CMFs are in a bin. <laughs> so it's uh, going back to series one. And again, I, I was not on a quick tangent on that. Uh, series one, I got them all. Series two, I can't remember. Maybe I got them all. Series three, I was like, eh, whatever. And then I just got the ones I wanted. A few occasionally, uh, I will call up my buddy Jeff or Janie uh, back in the day. And I said, save me a, a complete set and I'll pay you the whatever, the 60 bucks, whatever it is. I can't remember now. Um, at the time. So there, there are a sporadic series that came out in the past in the CMF one that I have the complete set of. I have the Disney, the first complete, I have two copies of that. I don't know why. Um, I was going to sell one. I just never bothered yet. So I have a complete series, uh, two complete series of Disney from the first time they released them. The second time they released this uh, Disney series two, I may have a complete set, but I didn't care. <laughs> I honestly didn't care. I got Huey, Dewey, and Louie because <laughs> that's what I wanted. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But when it came to the anything that looked like classic face, like the dark blue uh, Stormtrooper, lots. Thanks, Janie. Absolutely adored you. Again, absolutely fantastic to me. She kept on finding more and giving them to me. Uh, just wonderful, wonderful. And they're all over the layout now. Um, and, and a few other ones that I was interested in. The Wizard of Oz. I got them all. Dorothy, the Tin Man, uh, the Scarecrow, and the, uh, the, uh, the Lion. Because I, I love The Wizard of Oz. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, but overall, I do not have... Uh, on the far side of the room, I have on my wall the 32 by 32 uh, base plate. And there are collectible minifigs on that one. But Josh and I just like putting them there. And uh, every time we come... Oh, well, let's put one up there. <laughs> so, uh, but... Um, so, uh, overall... I, I'm glad they do it because they make a lot of money and it gives a lot of interest to the hobby. So the collectible mini fairy, the collectible mini figs was a massive success for the Lego company. Beautiful success for the company. And now when I'm buying used 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 lots now, I get CMFs. I, I find parts and pieces for the CMFs and there were an actual whole whole mini fig. I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> so um, so again, uh, but I'm not. I'm not a stamp collector. I'm not like a hockey card collector. I'm not a CMF collector that have to have them all. I, I love my friends that do have to have them all and have them all. And uh, from day one, and I and I love looking at that and I'm glad they did it. So somebody has them out there uh, that I know has them all. Fantastic. I love looking at them. I don't need them. <laughs> again, again. I, 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 I appreciate their passion for what they are doing. And I'm, I'm, and again, if I, I keep on saying, if I have it and they need it, just let me know. But I don't know what I have yet. <laughs> so, but if, if they're here and they see something to complete their series, it's yours, honestly. Um, so, <clears throat> but that's who I am. I love other people. Again, th this hobby is so so custom this is the way of putting it this hobby is so custom tailored for other people for everybody to enjoy it in a unique fashion that's a good way of putting it this 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 whole hobby is so custom tailored 
so people can enjoy it in their own way. Nobody has to do it the same way as anybody else. Nobody. I mean, most of us have overlaps. I mean, I love Classic Space. My friend Chris loves Classic Space. My friend Mark loves Classic Space. My friend Dana loves Classic Space. And we get, you know, Classic Space. <laughs> so, but in the end, <clears throat> Dana likes other stuff. Chris likes other stuff. Mark likes other stuff. And I like other stuff that don't overlap that much. Right? And their building styles uh, for Classic Space specifically. Don't, my, my, my building methods don't, don't, don't are not theirs and theirs are not mine i love their builds and they say they like my builds <laughs> so, so again in the end do you in this hobby you do what you want in this hobby and there's enough room there's enough history for crying out loud i mean i got pieces going back well before i was born in this very room <laughs> i had friends of i'll say more than queens not friends friends i have acquaintance i knew of people uh, I haven't talked to him in years now, but I knew of people who were just hardcore into the classic sets. And this is pre-1970 sets. Oh, sorry. I do know one person, my friend Gary, <laughs> so, who I adore, uh, who, uh, uh, who who loves the classic sets, but he also loves the encyclopedia of all sets and all interests and all parts of the Sabi, like the store displays and blah, 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 and some history and behind the scenes stuff. And I personally have no ability or no desire for me to go into that avenue in this hobby but i am so appreciative and so respectful and so loving the fact that gary's doing it and he's still continuing it and he's still finding out more and more stuff and he's adding it to his encyclopedia which is getting massively huge all the time but bigger and bigger um and so my friend gary uh, who I think I only met once in my entire life in the real world. Um, but we talk online all the time. Well, not all the time, but a lot. <laughs> and, and he's doing this because that's what he's passionate about. That's what he wants to do. And I so respect what he's doing because I think it's fantastic. Because I love trivia. I love, I adore trivia. I'm a vast accumulation of useless knowledge myself. But I have no, for the Lego hobby, I ha personally have no desire to sink my efforts into pursuing that trivia, the understanding of sets and history and blah, blah, blah. But I love reading about it. I love somebody else did all the research and I'm gonna read it. <laughs> so it's, it's like me and Star Trek. I, I, I adore Star Trek through and through and I'm a vast accumulation of useless knowledge about Star Trek, but I'm not down to the nuts, the, 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 the rivet counters, as they say. Um, I'm not down to that level. I, I, it's not who I am, but I love my friends who are rivet counters. Uh, and uh, I want them. And, I, and again, if, if they need something from me, people have needed stuff from me. Because <laughs> I've been around. <laughs> uh, and, and so they say, hey, Dave, uh, what about X? I'll tell you what I know about X and you can run with it. Uh, and maybe you'll find more information about whatever. Uh, because I've been around the hobby for a while. I got you know, a flaky memory at best. <laughs> but, but I've been around and I have stories. I have loads and loads of stories. Like my friend Joe wanted, wanted me to do an article for a brick journal. Fantastic, Joe. Love to. I can talk about my layout to the cows come home. <laughs> and, and again, some people, some people want to know about me modifying monorails. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, and, and so I'm here for that. Uh, and some people don't want to my I just, so some people don't want to modify bricks or modify monorails. I'm here for that too for you. Like it, it's 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 as I I can't keep on stressing this point that Lego is such a diverse for for one little toy that came out a good billion years ago, <laughs> a toy building system. <laughs> you can do whatever you want and find your own little niche that you're happy with, and you don't have to compare yourself. There is no competition here. I don't think there's, I'm not in competition with anybody. And, and overall, unless you're going into an RTL Toronto robot competition, which again, I don't think I have a picture here anymore, but I do have an award. <laughs> I love this thing. Uh, this was supposed to, this was supposed to go from person to person uh, to the person who won the robot competition 
uh, for each and every show, uh, robot show. We did lots back in the day. I just happened to win the last one, so I happen to have it. And it's the one that showed. This is when it showed up. Hey, uh, and bring it to the next one, and then they'll, they'll, it's like it's like a trophy. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it's here. <laughs> so, um, and RTL doesn't do robot competitions anymore, so uh, it will remain here, uh, like my dad's bottle of whatever he got the years and years, the sixty years ago at the second dough. Uh, it'll remain here until the lights turn out. <laughs> so. Um, but I, I don't see my picture of my my robot and stuff like that. Um, that's the only time I was competitive, and it was not even like, oh, I have to kick their butts. No, it was fun competitive, and we get on lug net, and we just weeks before the robot competition just keep on posting and playing Callum Ball. <laughs> Good times, and um, and uh, showing up today and just having a blast. It wasn't like uh, like since there was. Since there's no, uh, the recognition, it's whatever it is. It's like, ooh, he won the robot competition. <laughs> so I was like, yay! <laughs> and 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 uh, it, it was more fun just to be in the room. It was more fun just to post on Lugnet. It was more fun to go to the dinners before a robot competition and just go down to the minutiae. I think the most complicated one we did was Connect Four um, or Project X. Those were those were. I didn't actually complete a connect for a robot and then our, our friend steve came up with his connect for a robot just beautiful um project x was fun for me uh but then my friend rob just kicked everybody's butts <laughs> so but anyway uh but oh i've never been in competition in this hobby with anybody else uh, and I, I believe, and this is my personal thing, I'm not, telling, I'm not telling anybody else what to do or what to think or what to say, but I don't think anybody else should be in competition either because this is not a hobby where competition is a key factor or any factor in this, comp in this hobby. Uh, I, can't, I cannot fathom uh, an idea, um, an axiom of this hobby being competitive. Um, and, and and my I'm probably not breaking that. <laughs> I broke it. So I'm fine. My alternate nine ten four ninety seven is underneath here and I just kicked it with my foot. So forgive me while I fix it. <coughs> so <clears throat> this is my second uh ten four ninety seven. Uh, the one I built out of spare parts, and you can tell that because it doesn't have a logo in the front, and I haven't gotten around to making one yet. And even though I keep on saying I'm going to do it, um, I, um, I just keep it down here now because it doesn't fit up in the shelf over there. Uh, but anyway, um, other people's joy, other people's happiness, other people's passions, other people's uh, appreciations, other people's ideas of what awesome is, is what they want to do and honestly I says I I I one of my uh fundamental um basis of who I am is to appreciate other people. Uh that's why my parents brought me up is to appreciate what other people are doing and what they're going through and blah blah blah. And so my entire life I've appreciated other people's passions. And again, it's not something I would like, whatever, and 98% of it is something I would never think about for me. Like I'm not passionate about X, but I'm passionate about that person's passion of X uh, because I like the people. And, um, and so th I find, find other people's passions to be contagious. Uh, I get really, really, you know, I, when I'm at a show or whatever, like I say, car shows, I, I get right into it and I'll sit there and listen to somebody talk about, you know, top dead center, five degrees off and lover. And I have a basic grasp of auto mechanics because I took high school shop, <laughs> but don't give me a, a, a torque wrench, <laughs> like, whatever. But, but so I'm, I'm not going to be lost in the conversation, but I will sit there and I'll listen. I'll I have some general idea of what they're talking about, but their passion is just exuding. And, and, and I, all day I'll sit, I'll sit there by side of the car with them and then they'll, they'll talk to the passerbys and people like, it's just, it was just like, for me, it's just like when I was in Mississauga and people are coming up to me and talking to me about, oh, I had that. 
918 when I was 10 years old. And then I had this adventure with it. And I'll sit there and I'll just absolutely be enthralled. And that's, of course, talking about my stuff, <laughs> right? But I don't have to hear I talk because nobody else is here to talk to. So you're going to have to listen to me. But, <laughs> but at a show, I, I will listen more than I talk if the person wants to talk. Because I, I feed, I, I get happy, I am, I am honored and um, moved by other people's passion. Uh, even if I don't have a care in the world what they're passionate about. It's the person. And that's my whole life is people. <laughs> and so, yes, I hide alone in my basement <laughs> in this beautiful Lego room. I built stuff. But the building stuff is fun for me. Do, doing the sort, and you saw the sort, is fun for me. Uh, and, and and talking about my hobby uh, in a one direction overall. And some people respond, but overall it's one direction out. Uh, is fun for me, but my favorite, favorite, favorite thing nowadays, and it has been since 20, 2002 or three, whatever, is doing shows. Is because again, I've been to car shows, I've been to whatever other shows, lots of shows, train shows when I was a kid, and I was always the guest walking around, uh, checking everything else out. But what, when I go to a car show and sit beside the, the owner of the car, and the people come to him and they or her, and they start talking about that. I just sit there and just soak it in. <laughs> and so when I'm at a show, uh, overall right now, I usually have to stand by the layout because it needs to be babysat. Uh, I am trying to work out so it doesn't have to be babysat, but I got some ideas. But overall, but sometimes I, I go out and I walk to talk to the other people doing their demonstration, their whatever they're showing. And I'll sit there and I'll listen to the public talk to them. And it's just the best thing in the entire universe. Uh, and I really love it. So, um, but that's because I love hanging around people. And again, none of us have to like the same things a hundred percent. I think that would be boring. <laughs> um, cause then I wouldn't see Jeff's castle, right? And I wouldn't see, I wouldn't see GBCs. I wouldn't see, I wouldn't see micro, micro cities, micro scale cities. I wouldn't see any of this stuff. I wouldn't see Janie's artwork. And again, one of my favorite builders in the history of Lego is Janie. <laughs> like, I don't know. Uh, like, it's like the muses just smiled on her because everything she builds is just the most fantastic things I've ever seen. Um, but, uh, and Deborah, absolutely adore Deborah's stuff and, and other people. And so they take the hobby in the direction they want to go. I take the hobby in the direction I want to go. And we all show up at a show and we have a um, eclectic, if you want to say that, eclectic display of Lego displays. And um, I remember uh, Janie and was having a discussion um, back in BrickFet. And uh, she's the one that, you know, ran it, was hers. And so she had all the responsibility and blah, blah, blah. And so we're there and she gives out awards at the end of the show. And, um, she has to, um, there's a variety of different awards, best in this, best in that, like, you know, best in show and blah, blah, but there is a best in show. Usually I couldn't even begin. I, for me, uh, cause I, I feed off of other people's builds and even when they're there to talk to them and see how passionate they are about their builds. And I, I'm, uh, I'm a hack. <laughs> at the best of it i'm a hack and and so when i'm when i'm there and i'm seeing all these fantastically awesome builds uh, and and displays and and the fact that they're as passionate about their stuff as i am about mine okay i in my head i keep on saying i'm not going to touch my nose <laughs> and again i don't all the time when i'm off the camera but it seems when i'm on the camera all of a sudden i get self-conscious and there's itches all over my face i don't know how newspaper reporters do it i have no idea because you watch them and they're sitting there and they never touched their face they never you know rub like right now my nose is itchy my nose is never itchy <laughs> like when the camera's off my nose is never well sometimes when i have a cold but not as much i watch some of my videos <laughs> I don't know why. And I think he's touching his nose again. 17 times. I'm going to count in the next 20 minutes. How many times I touch my nose? <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. It's already gone on longer than I wanted it to. Um, you do you. And I'm happy for you. I, I, I see you. I see what people do. 
uh, people send me pictures now uh, on a variety of different things, emails, uh, Instagrams, Facebooks, YouTube, and uh, they talked about their passion for their hobby, and I'm here for it. I'm absolutely here for it. Most of it's classic space because that's what I have. <laughs> so that's kind of people are attracted to my website, <laughs> my my YouTube channel, classic space. Oh, just... <laughs> La. I mean, I adore this thing. I mean, anyway, I'm gonna. I can pull that one down. I'm gonna pull this one down. Now, this thing is kind of something. Oh, Josh was in here. I can tell. Because he loves the Black Tron. <laughs> he, he loves my Babylon 5 Shadow War Black Tron Galaxy Explorer crossover. Uh, so he pulls it down when he comes in the room. So that's up there. And it was just sitting on top of this guy. Um, now, really, really quick chance before I call it a day because it's already too long. This just came out in August. This came out 40 plus years ago. <laughs> yeah, 1978. <laughs> so, not 40. A long time ago. I don't want to do the math in my head. See, I just touched my nose again. <laughs> I'm gonna really stop doing that because it's stupid to do on the camera. Um, so I'm consciously thinking, don't touch my nose. Uh, <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, August 1978. And so is this gonna have the longevity in 40 years that this thing has had for the 40 years to get to now? So in 80 years with this guy, and 40 more years for this guy, I, I won't be around. <laughs> I touched my ear. <laughs> Come on. See, now I'm self-conscious about it. Um, is, is this guy going to be, is this guy going to have the longevity that this guy had? I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know when they have their, because this was just the 90th of what the 130th anniversary um, or 125th is because that's a nice number. Uh, whether or not they're going to say, who the, the 918 or the, Four nine seven. Because <laughs> to me, they're always nine one eight. Because that's what it says, or the nine two eight. That's what it says on the side. Nine two eight. Anyway, if this thing, uh, uh, one hundred twenty five uh, Lego years. Um, if this thing's gonna be. Oh, did you guys remember the ten four ninety seven? How awesome it was! I have no idea. I I don't think I don't. Th this is my personal prognostication. No, I'm gonna stroke my chin on proper purpose. I'm prognosticating now. I'm just ruminating sometimes. For me, in the future, for the world and the way it's going to be in a, in a while from now, a couple, a couple of decades from now, this will not have the lifespan that that one has or the, the je ne sais quoi of th this is the number one or close to the number one sets they ever came up with. Uh, this is not going to be on that list. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> when you're the first... Th that's one thing because that's gonna get you far uh the first knocking it out of the park which this guy did the other thing is that this this thing came out with an entire series and it was the beginning of the entire series of classic space and this is quintessential quintessential as the word is an important word in this specific instance this is quintessentially the base model the base je ne sais quoi the base wonder of the, the space theme. Now, again, the, the original space theme came up with a dozen sets, but this one was the biggest. And this one was what people afterwards, a year after, two years, five years, 10 years, when uh, Jake and I and Pete and I did the movie, this was talked about. Oh, and, and you come to this, you go to a show right now, and they said, Oh, I got the 928 for Christmas that year or the year after, because again, I was in the store for a while. Uh, you know, when I was 10 years old or five years old or 15 years, well, not 15, nobody said 15 yet, but for me, anyway, <laughs> uh, I got that, that one. This one, us fans are gonna buy, right? But the, the non-fans, non-Lego fans or non-classic space fans are not gonna buy this thing. They're not gonna buy it. So when, when you get to, uh, I'm, I'm going to be in the old age home <laughs> and it's going to be the 125th anniversary of Lego. And they're going to say, oh, what was your best favorite set in the history of 125 years of Lego or whatever? Not that most people in my history are going to remember anything before 1970. But anyway, they're going to say this guy. <laughs> they're not going to say this guy. I don't think so. I, I, unless, unless something else happens to make this thing the quintessential classic space set. But since this thing came out 40 years after Classic Space, 
I don't think it's going to be, I, I love it. I'm, I'm not disparaging this thing at all because it's one of my favorite sets they've released in the 21st century. It's easily in the top three, <laughs> my, my top three in the 21st century. For me, the Saturn V's, because of other reasons, uh, Saturn V is better than this guy. The Saturn V is my favorite set in the 21st century that Lego's released. It's number one <laughs> for my own reasons. But this guy, for me, nostalgic, and I love building it. And you saw all the videos I made building it and modifying the 918, blah, blah, blah. I love, I adore this set. But in the context of Lego, that guy there, <laughs> this guy here, this guy right here, this is what's going to be in 40 more years. Still coveted. And this one, I don't believe is going to be as coveted, uh, as quintessential, as uh, ensconced into the mythos of Lego space. I don't think. It may be. I could be 100% wrong. I, is, I, I'm not Carmack. I'm not Johnny Carson's Carmack the Magnificent. I am not prognosticating. Well, I am prognosticating for myself, but I, I am not predicting the future. My my surmising, my idea, my uh my uh, feeling, there you go. My feeling is that this one is not going to have the longevity that that one has because I think this one's going to fade. I think it's already starting to fade because <laughs> they're on deep discount already. Um, the people who wanted one got one or three because <laughs> they're so fast. Uh, it was my funnest set that I built this year by easily by far. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I love it because I got f two copies of this thing and the 924 and the 918 and i even made the bricks and i was all over it but 20 years from now i'm still gonna love this set but i'm gonna love this one more <laughs> so, and, and even though this one's simpler uh, basic pieces blah 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 this was their first cat this is I, I said this before this was their first kick at the can first kick at classic space the very first you, you can get into the arguments about 1979 versus 1978 this was their first kick at a can and they knocked it out of the park. Like it was, oh, it's, it's like the scene in, um, not Field of Dreams, The Natural, Robert Redford, Glenn Close, Robert Prosky. <laughs> I love Robert Prosky. Uh, um, uh, uh, the Natural, he's got he's got the bleeding now in his, in his side there because of the bullet wound that he had when he was a kid. And he's up at bat and he, uh, Robert Duvall. Don't forget Bobby Duvall because it, anyway, and he just, that's it, and the the, the 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 cover comes off the ball. And it goes, and it goes smashes into the lights. There's you know sparklers and fireworks coming out in the field. He's running the bases. I just I love I love I love the natural. I love Robert Redford movies. <laughs> but anyway, that's this guy. This guy knocked out of the park. You look at this thing now. Again, this is me just being very 100 percent and constant space. 100 percent. I have 10 of these in this house right now. <laughs> I adore this set. I absolutely adore it. And again, it's not my number one due to personal reasons because the 918 is what I got first. But taking, trying to take my personal feelings of which one I got first out of it, look at this thing. It's perfect. <laughs> so, for 1978 Classic Space. I, I, I don't know who... I, I We know who the designer was. But um, I don't know how he did it. I don't, people, when I was 11, wanted this set. They saw the picture. They saw it in the brochure. They, this is the Galaxy Explorer. They wanted this set. And I said, even then, this thing's got something to it. A je ne sais quoi. A heart to it. Uh, an appreciation of aesthetic. It's like, I was, I, this is always going on bigger tension than I wanted to. My buddy Jeff sent me a, a link to Adam Savage doing the tour of the Smithsonian and they're refurbishing the Enterprise again. <laughs> they did it in 2015. And now they're doing it again. They have more information. Uh, it's a beautiful homage. Adam's like me when it comes to the original series Enterprise. It is what kicked the entire thing off. And again, my it vacillates, but overall, I do love the refit more. When, when they did that whole love shot of the Enterprise in the motion picture, and the people thought it was the most boring thing in the entire universe, this is me rivet counting. I was completely enthralled 
by that scene. I saw it in the big screen in 1978, 1979, uh, the Enterprise, uh, the refit. And it was just the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. And again, I grew up, and uh, by, th by the time the motion picture showed up, I have seen, and I can guarantee, without any kind of guile and any kind of dishonesty or any kind of, I, I know, I've seen every episode of the original series, every single episode of the original series, at least, at least three dozen times, <laughs> including Turnabout and Shooter. <laughs> I grew up on TOS. I grew up on Classic Space. I love the original Enterprise and Adam's appreciation that he was conveying that he had to put his hands in his pockets. He just wanted to hug it. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'd be, I'm exactly the same guy in that specific context i was i would be just a complete fanboy to see the enterprise from the original shots shooting the enterprise from the original series i adore that ship i absolutely adore it just like i adore the saturn V. um the enterprise is significant to me not just because it's a model but that's because it's become ingrained star trek has become ingrained in my life since four years old <clears throat> and I appreciate its motives and, and its, and its uh, sincerity and blah, blah, blah. And I love classic space. I loved the 918 the second I got it. I thought it was like the best thing they ever put out. And of course, then I saw there's a 928. <laughs> so, anywho, a long story. I, I think my prognostication, and I'm not going to be around in 40 years. Well, maybe I'll be, I'll be 95. <laughs> But if I am around in the 40 years, they're going to look up this video and they're going to say, hey, let's do a comparison to see after 40 more years, which one people are going to want as a model or as a retro, as a whatever. Um, maybe Lego's not getting around. I hope they are. <laughs> they, they made it this far. Um, so anyway, all that said, I'm going to go to bed now. <laughs> It's been a long day. Uh, and I went off on too many tangents. I didn't want to go off 41 minutes. So I'm going to put this back up here. Um, this is, oh, come on. Yeah. I got to find more shelf space or get rid of some of this stuff. And this is going to go back on these here. So light gray is now sorted out. And I'm going to tackle the black at some point, probably after I wash these other pieces parts and pieces and um yeah it was a good day and uh, i hope everybody else had a good day uh buffalo i feel bad for you i hope everybody's doing well in buffalo uh we're getting a little bit of snow up here but it's not even sticking on the ground on the asphalt it's all melted actually i think the road the last before i came downstairs because it's after 10 o'clock now um p.m that the snow on the roads is staying, which means I actually have to dig down the snow shovel from my rafters in the garage, but that's a whole other story. I feel bad for the people in Buffalo. <laughs> so, uh, but every year, six and a half feet of snow now is five feet last night is six and a half feet now. So I don't think, I, I hope it doesn't break the record of nine feet that they had a few years back over one weekend when they got nine feet of snow in one weekend, but six and a half feet still, that's just crazy. Now, the good part is we do live in Southern Ontario. It's not like Sault Ste. Marie or anybody up there. Um, there will probably be a warm day between now and the end of November and most of it will melt, which causes zone issues. So all the people in Buffalo, I'm thinking of you. And I don't think anybody from Buffalo watches this channel because, you know, <laughs> Buffalo. Um, but um, I want everybody out there to stay safe. Winter's coming and most of us, uh, that are fans of this channel have to deal with winter. Uh, some of my friends do not have to deal with winter. They live in a beautiful spot all year round and I appreciate them. And, uh, I'm thinking I'm going to see if you have a spare couch <laughs> and, and just stay with you for a while. Uh, but no, I, I love winter. I do love my four seasons. I, I grew up here. I will say that, um, Every, every, every season has its pluses. Every season has its minuses. Winter, obviously, is one of those. Uh, when I was a kid, I looked forward to winter every single year. I uh, had such a blast in winter. Me and my friends doing everything in wintry up here. Um, as I get older, a lot of my friends are always dread the coming of winter. I'm not there yet. I still love winter. And... Um, my only thing is I don't like driving in it anymore. I, I do get to the point now where 
I just don't like driving in snow. Um, I love walking and we still go tobogganing and we still have a lot of fun and hikes and stuff. Uh, I dress up very warm and uh, all that other stuff, but driving on snowy roads, like if they're clear roads on a clear day and a bright sunny day, perfect. But I don't like driving in snow anymore. Uh, I especially don't like driving in blizzards anymore. And I used to do that a lot. <laughs> Because I drove a lot, um, and but now it's like ah, it's snowing outside. I'm just gonna say no. <laughs> so, so you guys all stay safe out there. Um, I'm gonna go dig down a shovel for tomorrow morning so I can uh, shovel the driveway. And um, I want everybody to take care and know that I appreciate you and um, I want you to be good to yourself and uh, do what you need to do. Talk to you soon.